Adriatic study evaluating Drivalumab with or without trimolimumab in patients with limited stage small cell lung cancer. Yeah, thanks. Really a, a collection of fantastic presentations, all, all really amazing. So it's my honor to present Adriatic uh, Drivalumab as consolidation therapy in the treatment of limited stage small cell lung cancer. Uh, as a way of background, there really have not been any major advances in the treatment of limited stage small cell lung cancer for several decades. The standard of care is concurrent chemoradiotherapy, but despite that, most patients will have relapse within two years, and a minority of patients will survive five years. Adriatic was designed to study the role of dervalumab, a PDL1 antibody, with or without trimolimumab, a CTLA4 antibody, when used as consolidation therapy following concurrent chemoradiation for patients with limited stage disease. The rationale for this was based on two pivotal trials. The Pacific study just referenced looked at the role of dervalumab after concurrent chemoradiotherapy for stage three non-small cell lung cancer, and that demonstrated an improvement in both overall and progression-free survival. But the Caspian study also looked at dervalumab with platinum etoposide chemotherapy, and that showed an improvement in overall survival when used in newly diagnosed patients with extensive stage small cell lung cancer. Here we present the results of dervalumab versus placebo in the Adriatic trial. So this was a randomized phase three double blind placebo control trial. All patients had limited stage disease, all patients had good performance status, and all patients had to have received concurrent chemoradiotherapy. Prophylactic cranial irradiation, or PCI use, was left up to the uh, treating investigator. The chemotherapy used was platinum etoposide up to four cycles, and the radiation therapy could either be once daily up to 66 gray or twice a day up to 45 gray. All patients were randomized then to either dervalumab at 1,500 milligrams IV monthly, to placebo, or to a third arm that included the combination with tremolimumab. Randomization was stratified by disease stage in whether or not the patients received PCI use, and all patients received treatment until disease progression, toxicity, or up to two years. This study had dual primary endpoints for the comparison of dervalumab versus placebo, looking at both overall survival and progression-free survival by blinded independent central review. And then there was a secondary endpoint to look at survival for the combination arm with tremolimumab. Safety and quality of life analyses were performed as well. Again, I'm presenting the data comparing dervalumab versus placebo at the first interim analysis. Dervalumab demonstrated an improvement in overall survival. The hazard ratio was 0.73, corresponding to a 27% reduction in the risk of death. With a median follow-up of a little over three years, the median overall survival for dervalumab was 55.9 months, and for placebo, 33.4 months. At the three-year landmark analysis, the overall survival rates were 56.5% for dervalumab and 47.6% for placebo. Dervalumab also demonstrated an improvement in progression-free survival, the, secondary, the second co-primary endpoint by blinded independent central review with a hazard ratio of 0.76 or a 24% reduction in the risk of death or progression. The median progression-free survival with a little over two years of follow-up was 16.6 months for dervalumab and 9.2 months for placebo. At the 24-month uh, landmark analysis, the PFS rates were 46.2% for dervalumab and 34.2% for placebo. This uh, led to, this study had a very good safety profile. Looking at severe grade three, four adverse events, these were nearly identical in each arm at 24%. Looking at any grade immune mediated adverse events, these were 32.1% and 10.2% in the arms respectively. And then looking at radiation pneumonitis or pneumonitis, the rates were 38.2% in the dervalumab arm compared with 30.2% in the placebo arm. So in conclusion, <clears throat> dervalumab as consolidation treatment after concurrent chemoradiotherapy demonstrated statistically significant and clinically meaningful improvement 
in both overall survival and progression-free survival compared with placebo in patients with limited stage small cell lung cancer. The overall survival hazard ratio was 0.73, corresponding to a 22-month improvement in median overall survival. The progression-free survival hazard ratio is 0.76, corresponding to a 7.4-month improvement in median progression-free survival. The treatment benefit was generally consistent uh, across predefined subgroups for both overall survival and progression-free survival. And consolidation treatment up to two years was well tolerated, and the safety signals were really consistent with what is already known for monotherapy with Dervalumab following concurrent chemo radiation. Consolidation Dervalumab will become the new standard of care for patients with limited stage small cell lung cancer following chemo radiotherapy. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Spiegel. Dr. Lauren Byers, ASCO expert and professor and thoracic section chief in the Department of Thoracic Head and Neck Can uh, Medical Oncology at MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas, will now make a few additional comments about the significance of this research. Dr. Byers. Thank you. So small cell lung cancer is one of the most aggressive types of lung cancer. And as you heard from Dr. Spiegel, the treatment for patients with limited stage small cell lung cancer who are being treated with the intent of cure has not changed since the 1980s. The Adriatic trial is a landmark study and provides a new standard of care with the addition of immunotherapy for patients with early stage small cell lung cancer who are being treated with a goal of curing their cancer. It's also an important study because of the magnitude of benefit that patients received with the addition of dervalumab consolidation with an average improvement in overall survival around two years. And this is in contrast to many uh, clinical trials in small cell lung cancer where often the benefit may only be measured in months. Similar to other lung cancers, and you've heard about you know, many advances related to personalization of um, lung cancer treatment for patients, we now know that small cell lung cancers are really different types of lung cancers. And so I think one important next step will be to understand who is benefiting the most with the addition of dervalumab, and how can we start thinking about personalizing treatment for the different subtypes of small cell lung cancer to further build on this and continue to make progress for these patients. Thank you, Dr. Byers. Um, it looks like Dr. Hopner is still not here, so we apologize for the